I've quit my Max Inferno account to start from complete scratch as a level 3. I'm 6 episodes in now and my next goal is to complete 2000 Tombs of a Massacre which will not only earn me a lot of money but also give me one of the rare escapes in the game to add to my collection log. Although to do that I'm going to need a decent set of gear. I've gave myself a deadline of just 2 more weeks to earn as much money as possible. Once that time is up, I'm forcing myself into the pyramid regardless of what I have. Lucky for me though, my RNG has been crazy. So whilst you're watching the video and thinking it can't get any better, it certainly does. Very quickly, let's talk about the last episode. I obtained a cash stack of roughly 90 mil from 99 mining and grabbed the broken dragon pickaxe from volcanic mine and had it repaired. This was the third time I've got 99 mining in old school, although unfortunately this time I didn't get the pet. Not to worry though, because I decided that I grabbed the mole pet instead. The last time I was here on my main account I went to almost 6000 KC trying to get the pet whilst on a twisted bow rebuild. Though you don't need a 1 build GP bow for this, even as a med level you can just bring a cheap Darok set and still make close to 1 mil an hour easily, with the pet drop as a bonus. The only requirement for this boss has to be the Falador Hard Diary, because without the shield that you get from this, you aren't able to have the big flashing arrow on your minimap telling you where the mole is. If you really wanted to, you could come down here without the mole tracker, but it's going to be absolutely miserable. So that's what I did, completed the diary and put the XP lamp into runecrafting. So this time round, I'm going to be spending that cash stack I got from mining on a fang and as much strength bonus as possible, which included a torture, ferocious gloves and a basilisk jaw to upgrade the natives knot. I did originally go with tacits, but these are only a plus one strength bonus over the obsidian legs and the face guard is a plus three over the natives knot. I'm doing this grind with protect from melee on, so I don't really care about the defense bonuses from the tacits. Whilst you see the KC go up rapidly by the hundreds, you're going to see the inventory setup change a few times. Originally I was going to be cheat with super attack and strength pots, but switched those to divine super combats eventually. I also didn't bring my cannon for the first portion of the KC, I was testing out how it was without one for a while, though I did end up bringing it with me later on. I really do recommend bringing the cannon here because it speeds up the first part of the fight. The mole won't dig until around half health, so it's some nice DPS increase at the start of the fight. And also the cannon just shows that the world is taken as well. Also, I can't believe I forgot this, but with the introduction of making friends with my arm, there are fire pits in a few different locations, and Giant Maul's Cave is one of them. So I lit it, and that frees up one of the inventory spots for another stamina or a prayer pot. So if you have a fang and some decent strength gear and want to make some money, I can't recommend this boss enough. It's so chill, it's great money, and the fang is great here because it's just so accurate. There were quite a lot of times when I was able to just take the boss down without it even digging as well. And the special attack is really nice for finishing off the fight too and stops you having to run around the cave so much. Anyway, I think you get the idea. The giant mole is good. As you can see by the KC here, I'm reaching around 1400 KC, which is almost half the drop rate of the pet. This is now where my busted RNG starts to kick in, and as I said at the beginning, it's only going to get better. Oh! I got it! I got it! I got it! I got it! Oh, yeah! Wow! That came out of nowhere, I was... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just in autopilot mode. I was just about to go kill another one. Wow. Oh man, what KC was that? 1,410. I don't know why, I just wasn't expecting that. I was just... Wow, that really caught me off guard. It was like a jump scare. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> uh, okay, well, what next? What next? Let's, uh, let's think about it. As you can tell by my reaction, I wasn't really expecting to get the pet so early on, though I did have plans in place just in case this happened. So whilst I had a look at my list of backup plans and deciding which one to take on next, I did some fly fishing at Barbarian Village and later on some RD Knights. I did this to hit 1850 total as well as make sure that runecrafting was still my lowest stat for Tears of Guthix. So one of these backup plans I had stuck out to me and that was 99 cooking. Now a few of you must now be thinking how do I have the time to do that as well as get back into PVM for some busted RNG drops? Well 
and let me show you. I spent just three days one tick Karam one cooking. At the start, I was hitting around 700k XP per hour, but this went up to as much as 950k XP per hour. This is way more XP than wines, and this actually profits too. I decided to take on this call because of the small bit of profit, and it's another 99 under my belt. Remember, this is a completionist from scratch series. Eventually, that also means 200 mil all. I spoke last episode about farming likely being one of the first 200 mils, and cooking is going to be another one for sure. But for now, I'm just grabbing the 99 real quick. I gotta say, I suck at Karambuan cooking, but this is quite a simple method. Just line up the inventory so that the bottom row is next to the range or the fire that you're using. You might suck at this as well to start with, but eventually you just go into a kind of a send mode and the XP just starts to skyrocket. Maybe it was all of the mining I did in the last episode, or being trapped in that cave with a mole for too long, but I'll admit, I found this kind of fun. I just went into a really nice flow state, and before I knew it, it was over. I went to the cooking guild to get the 99 cape with a few clan members. And also, is it just me or a 99 party is kind of dying out? I remember going to one almost every day with like dozens of people, but you just don't really seem to see that very often anymore. Anyway, after the 99 cooking grind, I went back to fishing to have a look at the list again, once reminding myself I am on a deadline. I quickly decided for the next goal I was going to start the barrows grind. I thought about doing 100kc every other episode. But to prepare for that, I need to complete the easy and medium combat tasks as well as the Mauritania Hard Diary. The combat tasks will unlock the Gommel's Hill, which will stop Prayer Drain at Barrows, and the Mauritania Hard Diary is for the increased rune drops. And so, for the combat diaries, I need to take on a whole bunch of different bosses, and as you guys can probably guess, this is where the RNG starts to kick in again, big time. I started to prep for the combat achievements by selling off all of the cooked Karambwans and the rest of the junk in my bank, including bird nests from the birdhouse runs. I also sold off my whip because I have a fang now. Can't believe these are almost under 1 mil now, that's kind of crazy. With the money I bought myself a trident upgrade, but I won't be using that just yet because the first place I went to knock out some easy and medium tasks was Temporos. All of the tasks here are pretty self explanatory, nothing too difficult. One of them includes having a full angler set equipped and that is actually a hard task which I find a bit weird. So whilst I show some clips of me knocking out a whole bunch of miscellaneous combat tasks, I'd like to let you know that I've created a Discord. So if you want some regular updates and sneak peeks at what I'm doing next, or to join some community events or my clan, then have a look for the invite link in the description. But back to the task now, I had to get myself 72 Slayers so that I could boost with a Wild Pie to 77 to take down the Brutal Black Dragon as well as some other Slayer mobs. Then after that, it was time to take down Skatizo. There was only one single totem in my bank, so I had to make it count for all of the tasks combined. If I mess this up, I'll be wasting time that I just don't have on trying to get another one. I was quite worried because one of the tasks is to make sure all of the altars are down whilst I finish the fight. Oh my god. <laughs> they just keep sorting. Come on. Oh my god, this is never ending, man. Okay, come on, finish him off. Finish him off. Come on. Don't, don't pop up, don't pop up, don't pop up. There we go, that should be all three. Yeah, nice one. What do we get? Oh, you're joking. <laughs> oh, of course, of course, of course. Hell yeah. I kind of felt like that was going to happen as well. Oh, man, this account's RNG is so much better than my last account. That's so good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm not sure what it is with me getting 1kc drops, but I'm not going to complain. Again, like I said at the start, there's still even more drops to come too. Anyway, next I had to farm some keys for the free to play bosses, and it was at this point I just felt lost in the runescape grind, but in a good way. It's like, my main goal is to do TOA, but to do that I need to get money, and to do that I chose to do barrows, but to do barrows efficiently I have to do combat tasks. But to do these specific tasks, I have to grind out these keys. My friends were watching me on Discord farm these keys and asking me when I'll be at TOA, and it's like, come on, 
What do you think I'm trying to do? But before spending those keys, I decided to mop up a whole bunch of other bosses real quick, being Serechnus, the deranged archaeologist on Fossil Island, which I feel like a lot of people don't even know exist. Then the crazy archaeologist, which is basically the same boss, but he's in the wilderness. They don't get any ward pieces or the fedora drop from this guy, unfortunately. Uh, but then it was time to stick on the Chaos Fanatic, which also drops ward pieces and a small chance of the Chaos Elemental pet. Although, again, I didn't get them this time around. Which is fine, because I'm hoping to do one big mega episode on the wilderness at some point in the future. After all of that, I started spending the keys I grinded earlier. I tried to get as many tests as possible per key. Remember, I'm on a deadline here and I don't have time to farm more keys. There is a task for both of the giant bosses to beat them on a free-to-play world, which means I got to wear some really nostalgic gear, and I have to say, I absolutely love this. For the next Briar Fighter task, I had to finish the kill with Venom, so I bought a Cert Pound for this, as I was going to need one anyway for the upcoming Dagonoff King tasks. The rest of the tasks were pretty straightforward, and luckily I didn't have any hiccups along the way. I then went to Shaman's for another couple easy tasks, and then it was on to the Dagonoff Kings. Not gonna lie, I was a tad nervous about this because I haven't been in years, and I'm in much worse gear and worse stats. But it went perfectly fine. Setting them up is a bit of a hassle, but once you start the rotation, it becomes quite easy. And you know what else is easy? Getting an archer's ring, apparently. That's almost 4 million GP towards the TOA gear, and that is just so nice to see. The rest of the trip was pretty uneventful outside of the combat tasks that I cleaned up. I had another clear out and sold off all of the loot that I had acquired. I also sold off the Serp Helm as it wasn't going to be of much use to me anymore. I don't really like buying and reselling gear, but it has to be done for the deadline. At this point, I'd finished off all of the combat tasks outside of Barrows, so I finished the Mauritania Hard Diary for the increased rewards that you get. I spent the lamp on, you guessed it, runecrafting. Then I bought myself some Alks from a friend so that I could get some extra magic XP too. I did a few Barrow's chests which finished off the easy combat diary. I spent the XP lamp on, yep, that's right, rune crafting. And then started the grind for the medium diary and got some very nice back to back drops. Ooh. <laughs> oh dear, it never ends, it never ends. Hopefully it stays this way when I get to TOA and get some big drops. Okay, but what about the back to back to back? Let's go, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god. <laughs> you disgust me. <laughs> oh. Just like that. Hot combat task. Ah, uh, classic. Missing the level, but I just got level 90 strength and 110 combat. Well, I wanted to get the other achievement with that one, but we kind of screwed it up, so let's try again. Oh! <laughs> oh! Any luck? Oh! Guthans Plate Buddy. Nice. So, the most annoying task here is to not get hit by any of the melee Barrows brothers, but there is a great method that I found. Essentially, get yourself a dragon spear and stun them as soon as they spawn. Then, run to the opposite side, wait for them to break the stun, then have them come towards you and you just freeze them. At this point, hit them four times with your trident just to be safe, and then if you haven't killed them, you just get ready to run to the opposite side again. Then, rinse and repeat. It also works on the reward chest too, you just have to get lucky and hope that they don't appear in the tunnels. I got screwed by that quite a few times actually. Now that was the last task I needed, so I went to go claim the reward. The hill is so nice because it stops the prayer drain at Barrows, and there are other rewards tied to the combat tasks too, which are really handy, including better clue chances, more bosses assigned on slayer tasks, more pest control points per game, and for the medium diary, a slight increase in how many cannonballs you can hold, which is a pretty decent one. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I have that one already as well. I'm pretty sure. How am I, how am I still getting dupes? That's crazy. Let's have a look. Okay, I've had four items and two dupes. 
<laughs> nice. Okay. Well, it's money. So. Oh, I got an elite clue. Oh, Perks flail. Nice. Okay. Chest hundred. Nothing. But we do get 145 million cooking XP. Hell yeah. The total loot for getting 100 KC at Barrow should be on screen. I think Runelight missed a couple of KC, but yeah, that's it for the most part. I think I made more money from the Diary Grind than I did from Barrows itself, though I'll be going back in the future to finish off the log for sure. At this point, I did another bank sale, selling off anything that wasn't going to be relevant for the TOA grind. I had a few hours left on my two week deadline, and so I decided to get 80 prayer. Now, I don't know if this has been mentioned much, but if you have Breath Unlocked, I highly recommend setting your spawn there. It's really close to the bank, but you also have a small chance of spotting Crystal Implings, and I managed to collect quite a few of them. Now, there were some really funny PKs out here, but one stuck out, and I've been requested by some friends to keep this clip in the video. I hate my stupid laugh so much, but here you go. <laughs> how many times can I? How many times can I? Come on, you can do it, dude. You can do it. 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 Come on, you can do it, dude. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> come on, come on, you're just gonna hit that 12. You're just gonna hit that 12. Come on, the poison's gonna. The po <laughs> Everyone what help, they got me. Oh, GG. So not long after that, I got my 80 prayer. I was thinking of going for 85 prayer, but dragon bones are just so expensive at the moment. Uh, back at the GE, I had to think about the gear I wanted to get and talk to some friends about it. I decided on getting myself a light bearer and an anguish. I also bought myself rigor and augury. Rigor is the best range upgrade that you can make, honestly. I have a lot of leftover cash, and one item that I really wanted was a Bandos God Sword, but it's just so expensive at the moment, and I didn't have enough cash. However, with the theme of getting lucky, I went through my bank one last time and sold off all of the scraps, and it was just enough to buy the BGS. I mean, I could have just sold off my Blessed Boots or the Berserker Ring, but I mean, that just would have sucked. I'll quickly go over some other interesting bits that happened recently too. I've been editing for an extra week on top of the two week deadline that I gave myself, and I got a few farming levels and I'm now 96, which is absolutely amazing. I also got a couple of hunter levels from the insane amount of birdhouse runs that I'm always doing, and during one of these birdhouse runs I ran past my fiance, who is maxing her Iron Man skiller. Herbie Boar is currently the best option for herb lore XP on an Iron Man skiller, and she's now at 50 million hunter XP, which is a little over 14,000 Herbie Boar KC. She's gotten 4 pets in that time too. There will be a bonus video out in the future about Tara's account, so keep an eye out. We also had a clan member get almost every single 99 all at once, which was incredible to witness, honestly. Speaking of the clan though, it was recently our 14th anniversary. I started this clan way back in RuneScape 2, and to celebrate we did a small drop party in some castle wars. Again, if you're interested in joining or you just want a Discord to hang out in, then there is a link in the description. Also, I think almost every single one of my episodes so far has had a RuneScape event in it, and this one is no different. It was the Easter event this time around, and I unlocked all of the previous year's rewards. Also, a little look at the dopamine tab. Caskets haven't gone up much since the last video, but I am now at 5,000 Castle Wars tickets. I'm saving all of my Castle Wars clips for a video in the future, and I'm also hoping to run some events in the future too. Anyway, here we are, the start of 2,000 Tombs of a Mascot, and this is the gear that I ended up with. There are some obvious upgrades to get, like an Ava's Accumulator from Vorkath, and I may switch out the Obsidian Legs for Tank Legs, depending on how I get on. If there was ever a time to subscribe, it's now, because I just know that this grind is gonna be incredible. 
And if you're watching this in the future, the next episode should be on screen. If not, it will be episode one, which you should watch if you're new here. With that said, I'm hopefully going to go get some purples now.